First of all, I'd say that uh, my first question to you would be, what is the question that I should be asking? Of course. So what is it? What do you think is the most important thing you've been doing lately? Um, what is the question that I should be asking is, is my motto and has been my motto for several decades. Um, it is uh, a good way to start, uh, in my opinion, because it opens up opportunities for uh, inquiry. Uh, it switches the roles of uh, um, the predefined uh, interviewer or uh, the conversation that somebody's having. And it really uh, allows you to take a step back. And as you say, ask yourself, am I doing the right thing? things? Am I exploring the right opportunities? Also, uh, when you ask yourself uh, what you are doing, whether you are asking yourself the right questions, uh, it enables you to segment your ignorance. There are several types of ignorance. Um, these days, for the past 10 years or so, we have been um, realizing how privileged we are because there is a certain type of ignorance of uh, factual information that uh, can be almost totally uh, discarded or uh, it can be looked upon as, as something that is going to go away immediately as soon as you realize there is a fact that you don't know because you will Google it, you will look it up in Wikipedia and, and the ignorance will be gone. There is another type of uh, uh, unknown that is of processes and best practices. And one of the benefits of the social web is that on top of the factual encyclopedic information that has become widely available and accessible uh, for everybody who's, who has an internet connection, the social networks and the social web, the web of relationships, uh, enables us to look at other people and how they do what they do and learn from them very, very quickly. And uh, if we feel that they are doing the right things, emulate them in what they do and to raise the bar in our collective expectations on what is the right way of doing things. And, and this has incredible benefits in people who want to experiment with new ways of achieving their goals, whether it is a technological startup, whether it is educating their children uh, in, in all uh, kinds of respect. It is also one of the reasons why uh, people who have been able to hide behind excuses um, or very traditional ways of uh, uh, pretending that they are doing a good job while they are not doing a good job now are feeling that they are back in a corner because these excuses don't hold anymore. And I think the most evident um, sector where this is uh, becoming um, clear to everybody is in the political sector, uh, where uh, whether you are a good politician or a bad politician uh, is, is something that uh, people can realize uh, rather well. A third um, segment of unknowns that has always uh, been very evident to me and uh, I don't have a universal solution for is uh, things you don't know, you don't know. Uh, those are uh, the most dangerous ones because that is where you might end up not asking the right questions in order to arrive to, to the solution, in order to arrive what you need to achieve. So, um, Back to, to, to your question, uh, what are the most important things that I'm doing? Well, um, uh, I uh, have been appointed the CEO of uh, DotSub, uh, a startup in New York City. Uh, I'm actually 
talking from New York right now, where I'm uh, spending most of that, my time these days, and I'm having a, a lot of fun in uh, um, uh, making sure that uh, the company can meet its challenges and go uh, to, to the next level. Uh, that's all, um dot com is i think one of the most handy tools to translate uh, ted videos i am a ted translator and i've been using it to translate videos and it's really really um easy to use and easy to to understand probably it is worth uh, for uh, the viewers of this interview to to uh, tell a little bit about dot uh, sub uh, our tagline is any video any language. Um, on the internet, it is evident that uh, information flows very freely. We have uh, an enormous amount of information, uh, a lot of it textual, but more and more in terms of video. One of the reasons is because computers are great uh, in digesting and prioritizing textual information, but we humans want to feel the emotional connection to the other person. And the best way to feel this emotional connection is through video. And that is the reason why um, conferences like TED, but also broad movements like uh, the movement of bar camps uh, have been so successful uh, because they have uh, given the opportunity to people to tell their stories. Uh, in a format and with the help of uh, uh, web-based online video uh, in, in, in tools that could uh, uh, travel everywhere. In order for it to actually reach the broadest possible audience, these videos have to be understood. And in order for them to be understood, they have to overcome the language barrier. And this is what uh, dot sub is four uh, where anybody can upload a video they created caption it in the original source language let's say english and then themselves or their friends or the passionate followers of the specific field that they are covering or using the professional services of professional translators from dot sub itself these captions can be translated in, in any language. So in case of, of TED, for example, uh, over 900 TED videos have been translated in uh, over 80 languages by over 6,000 volunteers, uh, which has created an incredible uh, amount of uh, interest and spreading of knowledge and excitement, and, and uh, was actually the basis for what has become TEDx which is um, the organization of uh, independent, local, TED-licensed, TED-authorized events that give a platform for non-English uh, speakers or, or speakers who, who, are, who are not in the main TED event to tell their stories. And for the first time a few uh, weeks ago, uh, TED actually featured a non-English speaker on TED.com. He's a Mexican um, uh, speaker, and you can hear him in Spanish, but you can understand him because his words are translated in English for the English speakers, in Italian for Italian speakers, and so on everywhere. I think that is one of the most um the greatest challenges actually you know overcoming the cultural the language barrier so that knowledge can be available for anybody anywhere that's one of the things that fascinates me uh, most um, the opportunity is to uh, make sure that whether you are on the level of the individual uh, or uh, you want to educate or learn or you are a brand, a business uh, that has a product or a service that you want to tell the world, world about, you now not only can reach theoretically everybody, but you can reach very, very practically everybody 
with uh, um, uh, an activity that is extremely accessible, extremely easy to to whoever is ready to take advantage of these tools. Um, you know, this is a very uh, uh, positive note of what social media and the internet and uh, online communities can do, the, the good things that online communities can do. There has been a lot of talking about social media during the last weeks and months, especially in Italy, um, and especially in uh, the UK, unfortunately, during the last uh, couple of weeks, about the negative parts of social media. What's your view about it? Do you think it is uh, right to stigmatize the social media for the use people make of them, such as uh, David Cameron said? Um, it has been extremely hypercritical and uh, totally blind to uh, what a technology platform means uh, for uh, the Prime Minister of the UK to pretend that by um, censoring social media uh, he can solve the problems that uh, caused uh, the, the, the riots in London. Uh, the hypocrisy comes from the fact that just six months or, or eight months before, the same people were hailing uh, the benefit of social media and decrying the censorship of social media uh, in Egypt and in the other countries of the Arab Spring and uh, regardless of the uh, of of the judgment of uh, uh, whether you are um, a, an egyptian politician uh, belonging to to the traditional um, hierarchies and so you decry the uh, uprising as a revolt and a riot and 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 you want to crush it and whether this is right or wrong or whether you are uh, a, a politician in the uh, ruling party of the UK and you are decrying the um, destruction of, of uh, property and uh, the violence in the streets um, and, and speak out against it. Those are uh, uh, moral, political and, and value judgments that are independent from, from the tool, the technological platform. However, when the same person says the tool is positive because other people are using it, but the tool is negative because now the people locally are using it, that is hypercritical. It has been blind because there can be very, very many examples of the use of social media, Twitter or Facebook, that helped people to escape danger, helped people to save property, helped people work with the police uh, to restore order in the UK. And if uh, the recommendations uh, of the Prime Minister were followed, these positive uses would disappear as well. So I very, very strongly disappear with his remarks. Um, after the London riots and the Manchester riots, um, a new Twitter account was open. It was called um, Riot Cleanup. And it was used to organize uh, common citizens to clean up the mess the rioters have been you know, producing throughout London and Manchester. And I thought that was an absolutely brilliant idea, you know, just to demonstrate um, exactly what you said, that it, the, the platform is neutral. It's the use you make of it that makes the difference. That's correct. That's a great example. 